The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Merry Christmas, Wolfpack! It's that time of year again! Another month of love, sharing, and caring among all organic life! The day of appreciating the joy of giving to others and coming together with those you love! And isn't that what Christmas is all about? The answer is no! How about a story, kitties? Ew! Not from that book! Let's read from my favorite book! Written by... Rob Zombie! Once upon a time, there was a cute little grumpy cat who really hated Christmas! I hate Christmas! You know why? Because there are no great horror stories to review during this upbeat season. None of the horror shows I enjoy have ever created that many awesome horror Christmas tales. Most of them fail hard. The Haunting Hour sucked at it. Are You Afraid of the Dark sucked at it. Goosebumps never did it and the Nightmare Room didn't live long enough to ever do one. The only horror classic we know that generated a great supernatural Christmas adventure was The Twilight Zone, giving us the beautiful holiday icon Night of the Meek. Unfortunately, my brother Wolf stole it from me. Twice! <coughs> So, looks like we're stuck spending winter time with the beloved web series Crit TV! And checking out their alleged best nightmare before Christmas, which apparently features a demon Santa Claus! Well, as long as he's better than a jerk who sicks the Krampus on a poor family and burns their house down, I'm game. So, did Crypt TV really give us the great gift of a gripping Christmas nightmare? Or is this just another lump of coal dumped in our stockings? Well, let's open this present up and see what's inside. This is our wacky review on the Crypt TV holiday special, Milk and Cookies. <laughs> So, our webisode opens up on Christmas, where we see a still mortal Freddy Krueger failing to bond with his bratty half-pint of a daughter. They're leaving out milk and cookies for Santa. <coughs> but Freddy fails to bond with his brat because she's a piece of crap. Crystal, I told you these cookies are for Santa. But I want one! Honey, you already had dessert. And if you take the cookies, then Santa's not going to bring you any presents. Santa is already fat, and I need one. Kids. I'll give credit. This tale from CTV is more so a goofy dark comedy, rather than a dead serious scary story to watch in the dark. The comedy is quite humorous at times. Nothing phenomenal, but it gets a laugh or two when it can. Night. Love you. Ugh, bite me. Only if you were a cookie. Shut up, Daddy! I fought for custody. <laughs> Ordinarily, I hate dark comedies, since many of them are not very good. But Crypt TV is slightly better at it than most horror shows are, since they go as far as they want to with it, because they don't have to worry about censorship or executive meddling, which allows them to be as gruesome and over-the-top as the creators desire. The worst element of the comedy is that sometimes we do get a bad groaner, or the kid characters aren't as funny as the filmmakers thought. But overall, the story is still pretty amusing, mostly due to the creepy stuff. Speaking of which, the bratty chick hears Santa dropping off her presents, where of course, she just has to see. But when she searches his sack, she gets, uh, something sinister. But naturally, it's followed up with wacky hijinks. <laughs>
was hilarious. I love the heck out of that odd dark turn. First off, wow, that demon Santa Claus is shockingly horrific. For a goofy comedy short, the design of Demon Santa is quite impressive. He looks like the bastard child between Saint Nick and the Krampus. A gross, slimy, big yellow beast disguised in a cheap Santa suit who eats children that are still awake is surprisingly scary. Not as grim as Tara or the Birch, but this holiday killer has style. We'll get some backstory on this guy later, but for now, he's a savage monster. He leaves presents for good people who stay asleep, but he'll murder and devour naughty kids who are still awake and interfering with his delivery route. Jeez, for the love of all that's holy, you kids better go to sleep on Christmas Eve, otherwise Santa will eat you if you don't. A most excellent marketing campaign. So Santa leaves Freddy a lump of coal and departs, where we all know the death will be pinned on the dad, and he'll take the fall for all the Elm Street murders. Meaning that Santa was the one who made Freddy Krueger. I will agree that while short, it was a pretty funny story. However, that was just the first part. In the sequel, we follow another little girl who wakes up too early and has to see Santa in person, only to get a repeat of the same fate. You know, I'm starting to realize why the Haunting Hour never showed us big yellow eating children on screen. Cause this is disturbing. I love it. But uh oh, another little girl comes in only to see her loving sister die horribly. But just when Satan Claus corners her, he runs off when the parents wake up, leaving only a lump of coal behind. Wait, why did he run away when the parents woke up? He didn't mind trolling Freddy in the last episode, but now he suddenly has to hide his secret? Great continuity! By the way, I love that Birch reference. Real cute, Crypt TV. Of course, this raises the question on why the Birch, dark protector of innocent children, isn't guarding these kids from evil Santa, but why split grass blades? Six years later. So, in the future, we see the little girl Delaney all grown up, planning revenge on Demon Santa with her own suicide squad. Jackson, you're my tech expert. Marley, you're on recon. Marley. Oh, yeah, totally. And Carl, you are, of course, the muscle. Seriously, did I steal someone else's identity? What, we some kind of suicide squad? Ugh, really, Crypt TV? A suicide squad of kids? Did you really expect that to be a big hit? Surely this won't be dated. This is where we get some exposition regarding the evil Santa. Delaney informs us that the monster is... Ugh, a creature who eats children who stay awake every Christmas and gives gifts to unsuspecting fools, dubbed Walter. <laughs> Walter? Walter? The disgusting demon Santa is actually called Walter? That's the best you could come up with, Crypt TV? Come on, where's your imagination? This guy is so cool that he should be called something epic, like Satan Claus, spelled like this. But you settle on Walter? Why? How come so many horror writers label their badass horror monsters with such stupid average names? It's like Vampire King Margo and Snake Mutant Jake all over again. Be brave! 
Anyways, Delaney assembled the best kids on the block to help her complete her ultimate plan of trapping Walter and slay him once and for all. The kids' suicide squad set up a stakeout before instantly noticing someone strange up on the roof. Wow, that was fast. Santa already finished up in the rest of the world? Duh, okay. Suddenly, somebody knocks on their door, which is so obviously a fake-out because, as we all know, fear never knocks. WTF, Delaney! You're just gonna have a holiday party and not invite me? You need to be quiet. I know Marley's in there because I have her find my iPhone. And if you didn't invite me because I'm half Jewish, that's a hate crime. And I will straight up call the police! Oh my gosh, can somebody kill this chick already? Oh shit! So, after slaughtering some annoying Jews, Walter breaks in and kind of screws with them, eats some finger foods, and gives Delaney her lump of coal, which was actually once her dead sister. Oh yeah, not only does Santa eat children, but he seriously craps them out in the form of coal. The lumps of coal Satan Claus hands out are really the naughty children he ate, and he gives them to other bad people who he didn't kill this year. I don't know what's worse, Santa eating children then crapping them out into coal, or the fact that Walter seriously held on to this old piece of poo from six years ago just to give it back to the big sister in order to be a dick. Ew! You better be nice, kids, or else Santa will literally poo in your stockings. This Santa is so twisted, it's amazing. I just wish his name wasn't Stupid Walter. But finally, face to face with the kid's suicide squad, Walter gets his butt whooped. <laughs> What? That was it? All that build-up and great horror writing only to have Walter die like a wuss and get his rear end handed to him by children? That was terrible! Looks like Walter learned the definition of Santa's sleigh. <laughs> So, they finally end this nightmare, but Delaney calls somebody mysterious dubbed Alice Q, who was apparently the girl's inside scoop and is on her way to retrieve the corpse. This is apparently some form of sequel bait where Walter is getting set up for another story later and hinting that this takes place in the Crypt TV cinematic universe. I have zero clue who this Alice Q is, but according to Crypt TV, this ominous agent is some kind of a monster hunter in the Cryptverse who is trying to study and exterminate the creatures of the show's franchise. The series is trying to tie Walter in with the cinematic universe of Crypt TV. The Birch, look -see, The Beast, etc. Alice Q seems like an Amanda Waller-ish figure who Crypt TV is building up for a greater story later. I can't tell you much about her since so far little has been revealed about her but I'm kind of conflicted on seeing Walter dragged into the same level as the more epic monsters. This guy is mostly a comedic villain compared to Terra and Luxy, almost to the point where he doesn't fit in with the higher universe due to his wackier shtick. It's like trying to tie in the Teen Titans into the Dark Knight saga. Some stories just don't connect as well as some would assume. In short, the Alice Q sequel bait is an interesting idea, but it will never pay off in this story arc. Well, that was pointless. Then, like colossal frickin' morons, 
The kids just assume that Walter is truly dead, never make sure he stays dead or fully finish him off, leave his body out in the open, and go off to party like nothing happened at all. <laughs> Oh boy, I wonder what the twist is going to be. Tonight, you. What a shock! The horror monster wasn't dead! Who'd have thunk it? Anywho, that was the end of Crypt TV's Supercut short, Milk and Cookies. And it was the most moderately average Christmas tale ever. Yeah, it was okay, but nothing magical. The story is a simple plot where a psychotic demon Santa Claus goes around killing kids, while some naive children wake up to find him, only to discover that Saint Nick is a stank dick. Demon Santa slaughters naughty children, but has no qualms about offing innocent kids either, for the error of just staying awake to see him. Part 1 basically shows us what his motive and typical day is like. While Part 2 has a more plot-driven revenge story, where a group of kids combat him Pennywise style for killing kids around the neighborhood. The story arc is mainly funny, but Part 2 tried for dramatic content. Most of it works, yet some of it needed more fine-tuning. The kids and Walter can be incredibly funny, but sometimes we do get a few lame lines or stupid scenes. Our old pet peeve trope of idiot moments return in full force. The ending of Part 2 was super weak, because it was the most predictable stuff ever. I'm so sick and tired of characters acting stupid just to drive the plot forward. These kids were smart enough to beat down Demon Santa, but then randomly turn stupid and allow him to live unguarded and are surprised to see him alive and pissed in the end. It's just dumb. Honestly, I wouldn't complain about this if the short just remain a 100% pure comedy. If it was a joke, then maybe it could have been funny. However, when Alice Q is name-dropped, and as the writing tries to be emotional, it forces us to take a dumb concept seriously. And it just feels lame, thanks to forcing us to think deeply about all this. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think this episode would have been better if it just stayed as a comedy episode. Don't have this world-building or super serial final act. Just have fun. Especially since Alice Q never pops up ever again. So it just felt like a great waste like Walter's cold dung. To put it bluntly, the Avenging the Dead Sister arc does work. The setting up the Crypt TV Marvel Universe does not. However, I did think the supercut had its good elements. The evil Santa Claus is pretty grisly and makes for a cool monster. The Christmas setting is nice. The sister's character arc is decent. There are legit funny moments. And overall, Crypt TV can pull off great horror shorts. It feels like Crypt TV wanted to do their own version of the Krampus movie, which honestly does enchant for the most part, thanks to Walter being his own villain. The best praise I can give it is that Milk and Cookies shorts are darkly fun. Nothing heavy or as impressive as the show's more ambitious work, but I think some people could just watch for a little dark Christmas magic. So, I grant Milk and Cookies... A Silver Skull. It was simply alright. So far, this is one of the better horror Christmas flicks I've seen. But it does fall short in a few areas, preventing it from being a laugh riot. Though, it is perfectly amusing, has funny scenes, great productions, and an awesome Christmas monster. So some may find it as their type of present. While a decent watch during the holidays, Milk and Cookies is still an adequate stocking stuffer. Still, I'd take it over goodwill toward men any day. Good night, everybody!
And that day, Cat learned the true meaning of Christmas. That it's important to enjoy the holidays with those